read from verse number 1 until number 16 responsibly. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Giba. And the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Michmash eastward from Beth Haven. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of God and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings, and he offered the burnt offering. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee, for now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. And Samuel arose and got him up from Gilgal unto Gibeah of Benjamin, and Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about six hundred men. Father, bless the Lord, the reading of thy word, and I pray, Lord, that you will continue to speak to us as we study your word. Please, Lord, give us an understanding mind, illuminate our hearts, O God that we may know, Lord, how to apply the words, Lord, that we're going to study in our lives. May we be, Lord, a person that will be according to your own heart, O God, though all of us are unworthy. But as Paul says, that you counted him faithful and worthy, O God, for the calling that you've given him. So, Lord, grant us enough grace. So even these things, uh, Lord, will happen in our lives. I pray, Lord, that you will be glorified in everything that we do. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So basically, we know the story here that uh, there's going to be a battle between Israel and the Philistines. And because of the sheer number of the Philistines, uh, Israel, the Israelites are afraid. They have not seen and have not sinked into them the power of God. If you're going to look at the history of Israel, we can see that 
they were rescued by the Lord from the most powerful country on the face of the earth. And that was Egypt. The Lord showed His power as He provided for them in their journey every step of the way. The Lord showed them that He is powerful as He defeated countries after countries when they finally entered Canaan. You see, sometimes our problem is that we give in to our fear without trusting the Lord. They fear to enter Canaan because of the giants. They fear to enter Canaan because of the walled cities. They fear to enter Canaan because maybe they do not have the uh, training and experience to fight a battle because they were slaves all their lives. They were not trained to be soldiers. They were not trained to uh, fight in a war. They were freed from slavery. So fear engulfed their hearts that they do not want to enter Canaan or the promised land only to know that when they finally enter Canaan, to know that the Canaanites are the ones who are fearful of them. Because they have heard what God did in giving them freedom from Egypt. Because they saw what God did in preserving them for 40 years in the wilderness. You see, people cannot survive a week in the wilderness. There is no provision in the wilderness. There is no water in the wilderness. There is no food in the wilderness. The weather is unforgiving, unforgiving in the wilderness. But in spite of all these things, they were able to uh, negotiate even around the wilderness for 40 years because of God's provision, because of God's protection based on God's promises to them. So when they finally entered Canaan, they marched from victory to victory. Of course, there are setbacks, especially in AI, when they trusted in their might and when they trusted in themselves. But every time they fight the battle trusting God, then victory will always happen. It doesn't matter if they are few. It doesn't matter if they are many. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, weapon they are going to use. What is needed is for them to trust the Lord and God will show them that God will do the rest. So sometimes that is uh, the only thing that God needed from us to trust in the Lord and not in ourselves. To throw ourselves at the mercy of God and not to look that we can do something in order to accomplish anything from God. So Samuel, uh, Saul, and Israel is facing a formidable enemy, which is not new to them. Because there was actually no battle in the past. If, if Saul is just going to review the history of Israel, there is no battle in the past that they have an advantage. David and Goliath. Bagamat hindi pa history dito yon, Pero sa atin, history na. David have, have no advantage. If you will look at face value. In, in, <laughs> yan ang mahirap sa bago cellphone eh. It's not. Buti, hindi lupang hinira. Kundi napatayo tayong lahat. Snacking grow. Diyang tulong ang mga mao. <laughs> okay na. Sure ka. <laughs> Nasaan ako? Sa? Face value. Ay, okay, okay. Ah, uh, there is no history in the previous battles that the Israelites had the upper hand or the advantage. They are always at what we call the uh, negative end of the spectrum. They were few in numbers. They were always uh, on papers or at the look of it will be out uh, 
Fox will be out, uh, uh, will just be defeated by the enemy. But then one thing that is going on for Israel is that it doesn't matter how many or how few they are, God is on their side. And if God is on your side, you are always the majority. People may look at you as nothing. People may look down at you. But if you are with God, then you are always in the upper hand. If you remember when the uh, servant of Elijah was so afraid. And he said that we are surrounded by the enemy. And then Elijah prayed, Lord, open thou his eyes that he may see. And then when God opened the eyes of, I believe, Gehashi, he saw that those that are surrounding them are surrounded by the angels of God with their sword drawn, ready to strike at any time in order to give victory to God. So this is what Saul and Israel is facing. You see, sometimes the hard thing in our life is this. Whenever we are faced with a circumstance that is not favorable for us, instead of uh, holding on to God, instead of looking at the track record of God, we give in to our fears. We doubt God. It is as if nothing happened in the past that will help us conquer our present and move on to the future. So that is why they were so afraid. That is why they do not know what to do. In the face of the fact that Jonathan was able to destroy a garrison of the Philistines almost single-handedly. So that shows that God is going to do something if they will just trust Him and obey Him and do whatever the Lord had commanded them. So, previous to this, there was a clear instruction uh, from Samuel to Saul that they have to wait. That they need to be in that place and Samuel will arrive and as what happened before, Samuel will offer unto the Lord and then victory will be given to Israel by God. But this time, there is a different uh, reaction and there is going to be a different outcome. Why? Because Saul looked at his circumstances, looked at the fear of his people, and then, and then he succumbed to this fear and this circumstance and he put things into his own hands. He said that, Samuel said that he will come, but he's not here. The people are becoming discouraged. They are living. The people are in disarray. They do not know what to do. So I need to offer the offering myself so that the people will see that an offering is being given to God and they will have heart to become courageous and rally behind me. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not what God wants soul to do. It is the job of Samuel. It is what God had given only to Samuel. You see, God has a great plan in the life of Saul. You remember what Samuel said? What is this that you have done? Don't you know that God should have established your kingdom forever? He should have been in the place of David. He should have been in the throne of God forever. But because he took matters into his own hands, and disobey God, then everything was taken from him. And if you will notice, in verse 13 and 14, this is what the Bible says, And Samuel said to Saul, Thou was done foolishly. Do not do the job of the Holy Spirit. Do not take the part of God. You stay within your Parameters. You do what you are commanded by God. It is not our job to do what was not given to us. And sometimes that happens in our uh, uh, time right now. We can see soul winners doing the job of the Holy Spirit. We can see people manipulating people to get saved. You see, sometimes we said, but my motive is good. The motive of soul is good. He says, I wanted to offer so that people will be encouraged, so that they will have a heart to go into the battle that God can give us the victory. His motive may be good. His motive 
may be right. But ladies and gentlemen, our motive is not important. What is important is our obedience to God. He told him, today is better than sacrifice. So sometimes we make our motive as the most important basis of our action. Kaya mga kapatid sa Pilipinas, kahit naman nung panahon ko, dahil tama motibo ko eh. Nag-preach ako ng salvation. May mga unsafe. Sabi ko, sino gusto tumanggap sa Panginoon? Taas ang kamay. Walang nagtataas ng kamay. Eh, yung motibo ko, maligtas yung mga tao. Kahit walang nagtataas ng kamay, salamat sa kamay na yan. Meron pa ba? Oo. Oh, Biglang magtataas na ng kamay yung iba. But that is deception. My motive may be right, but what I'm doing is wrong. My job is to preach the Word of God. My job is to warn people about hell. My job is to preach salvation loud and clear, and it is the job of the Holy Spirit to convict a person of sin, to convict the person of righteousness, and it is the Holy Spirit who will save the person, not me. Eh, kasi masyado tayong result-oriented Masyado tayong goal-oriented. Kaya, ginagawa na natin ang gawain ng banan ng Espiritu. May mga pastor pa nga, makikita ko na eh. Kailan ang tanggapin mo, Panginoon? Alam mo ba sa impyerno, nakapupunta ngayong gabi? Alam mo, pag hindi mo tanggapin ka pang Diyos, mamamatay ka sa impyerno, nakapupunta. Mag-decide ka. Tanggapin mo, Panginoon. Ano, gusto mo tanggapin? Eh, talagang kulang na lang eh. Tutukan ng baril eh, para. Eto, Mamamatay ka ngayon. Ito ang baril, nakatutok sa'yo. Tatanggap ka o hindi? Sabi, talagang kulang na lang. Ganun ang gawin natin eh. Para itong magkipinta. The motive is good. The motive may be right. That is why we have so many forced profession in our churches. Why? Because of humanism. Because of our own style. Because of our own motivation. Because we want to see results. And sometimes it is because of pride. Para bagang, pambira na pizza ko, walang maliligtas. Sabi kong walang maliligtas eh. Si Noah, 120 years nag-preach. Sabi, wala namang naligtas. O, oh, nang hinayang ba siya? Hindi, hindi niya gawain ang magligtas. We are soul warners and soul winners. We are not the Savior. We are the instrument of the Savior, it is the Savior's job to save, not our job. Kaya lang, mula nung, nung panahon ng, ng mga apostol, dalawang libong taon mahigit na, dahan-dahan lumayo ang simbahan sa katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya ngayon, napakalayo na. Pag ito inatake mo, sasabihin, wala kang pagmamahal sa kaluluwa. Sasabihin, walang mangyayari sa ministry mo. Sasabihin nila, tinan mo kung hindi namin ginawa, magiging ganito ba kami karami? Hindi ganun eh, mali ang tingin mo eh. Sa daan libong sinabi mong naligtas, bakit ganyan lang? Yan ang minsan natin hindi makita. And so it's like that. He said, I'm going to put matters into my own hands and I'm going to do what I think. You see, what I think is right so that we can win the Victory. You see, you are not supposed to do what you think is right. You are supposed to do what you are supposed to do according to the word of God. Amen? So he said, And Samuel told Saul, Thou was done foolishly. So most of the things that we are doing in our churches are foolish things. Because we have changed the ways of God. We believe in the saying, God's work must be uh, done God's way. And yet, we do our way, therefore we think that we are God. Because it is our way that we employ in doing God's will in our lives. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God. You see, that was not the job of Saul. It was not commanded to him by God. That is why we need to understand that God is a God of order. If He commanded you, it is your responsibility. If not, then it is not your responsibility. 
Kaya nga pag ang Diyos binigay niya sa Israel, tayo yung church, huwag natin kunin. Pag inutos niya sa Israel, tayo, tayong mga preacher at pastor, huwag natin iutos sa church. Kasi maliwanag ang utos ng Panginoong Diyos. Our God is a God of order. Pati yung first fruits gusto mong gawin ng church. Pati yung pinagagawa ng Diyos sa Israel na storehouse tithing ay gusto mong ipagawa sa church. Pati yung tithing under the law that was only given to Israel, we are giving to the church. Why? Because we want to do it our way. The motive is right. We want money in the church so that we can do more for God. But it was not commanded to us. There is a command and if we obey, we can get the best result. That is sometimes we do not realize or understand. We thought that our ways are better. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But destruction will be the end of it. So that's why we need to obey the thus saith the Lord. You are foolish. Why? Because it says, you did not do that which was commanded thee by God. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Sabi ni Samuel, sayang soul. Sayang. Kung naghintay ka lang sana. Kung hindi mo lang sana ginawa ito. Yung sanang kingdom ay mai-establish sa iyo, sa Israel, forever. But, it's not going to be because Saul is very impatient, disobedient, and he looked at circumstances rather than the truth or the commandments of God. Naalala ko itong isang kwento, medyo nakakatawa lang ng konti. May isang may isang uh, high school na first time niya mag attend ng ano? Si ano yung, ano yung prom? Ano ba yung tawag doon? JS Prom. Excited siya. So bumili siya ng pantalon, kaya lang medyo mahaba. So ginawa niya, nalipitan niya nanay niya, sabi niya, nanay, pwede bang pakiputulan nito ng 4 inches? Kasi mahaba eh. O sige anak, naglalaba lang ako. Lagay mo lang dyan, pagkatapos puputo lang ko. Eh, impatient siya. Nilipitan niyo ate, ate, pwede mong pakiputulan mo to ng 4 inches. Ah, sabi niya, nagluluto lang ako. Ilagay mo lang dyan. Pagkatapos ko magluto, puputo lang ko. Eh, ba, hindi talaga makapaghintay. Pinuntan si Inday. Inday, pwede mong pakiputulan nito ng 4 inches. Ah, sabi niya, sige, ano mo, ilagay mo lang dyan. Uh, isasampay ko lang yung nilalaban ng mama mo pagkatapos puputo, puputo lang ko yan. Aba, hindi pa na kontento. Nalipit ang pangyong kuya niya. Kuya, pwede bang pakiputulan ito ng 4 inches? Ah, tapusin ko lang itong pagkukumpunin ng aparador. Pag natapos, puputo lang ko yan. So, naligo na siya. Natapos ang nanay, pinutulan ng 4 inches. Natapos ang ate, pinutulan ng 4 inches. Natapos si Inday, pinutulan ng 4 inches. Natapos ang kuya, pinutulan ng 4 inches. Natapos siyang maligo, isinuot niya short ang kinalabasan ng pantalon. Why? Impatience. Walang pasensya. Ganun din si Saul. Bagamat hindi short ang, uh, ang, uh, ang sinuot ni Saul, but he was short-changed because of his impatient attitude. Kaya dapat manatili lang tayo doon sa inuutos ng Diyos and let us learn to wait upon the Lord. Amen? You see, sometimes God's delay is a test. If we are going to trust Him, do you remember Lazarus? Do you remember Mary and Martha when Lazarus died? And the Lord deliberately delayed His coming. And then when He came after four days, they said, if you had been here earlier, He should have not died. But He said, I purposely did that so that people will see the power of God. Amen? And he raised Lazarus to life. What is God telling them? God is telling them, I am the resurrection and the life. Even though you are dead, if you trust in me, then I can bring you back to life. Amen? You see, God has always a purpose 
for the things that are happening in our lives. Here, God is testing the patience of Saul. And sad to say, he miserably failed the test of God. And verse 14, But now thy kingdom shall not continue. That was the end of his kingdom. That was a costly offering that Saul did in behalf of Samuel because he went ahead of God. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord that sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people because thou was not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. So now we are introduced to a prophecy that will happen in the life of David. When God said that he sought for a man after God's own heart, he was referring to King David, whom Samuel anointed to become the next king of Israel. Now, if you will notice, going to the New Testament, when Paul is delivering his sermon at Antioch, he briefly recounts the history of Israel and refers actually to this statement that David was a man after God's own heart. And that is a very beautiful compliment to be called a man after the God of uh, after the heart of God. Amen. It is one that characterizes every person who wears the name of Christ. Every Christian should be a man after God's own heart. Every saved, washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, must have the characteristic of a heart that is following the heart of God. Amen. So that should be my attitude. That should be your attitude. That should be the attitude of all the children of God. Why? Because it is also the attitude that was shown by the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are going to study the life of David as he was called a man after God's own heart. And as we study this, we can also see a parallel between the atti attitudes of David that corresponds to the attitude of the Lord Jesus Christ that we should exempli uh, also exemplify in our lives. So if, if, if we are going to follow Christ, we need to follow David as David followed the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we go here, side note, we can see that though David committed so many mistakes in life because of his desire to glorify God, he was called a man after God's own heart. Amen? You see, human will never call an adulterer a man after God's own heart. Humans will not call a murderer a man after God's own heart. Humans will not call a prideful person a man after God's own heart. Why? Because humans do not erase the mistakes, but God buried our sins. And has forgotten our sins for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross that we might be able to be given another chance not only to live life, but at the same time to serve the Lord according to His will. So let us look at why David was called the man after God's own heart. Before we do that, let us go to Acts chapter 13, verse number 22. This is the basic difference between Saul and David. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse. Si Jesse pala ang tatay ni David. Ano kaya magaling sa Bible? The son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Saul did not. Amen. Saul did not. But David 
did. So even though David committed sins in life, and yet he fulfilled the will of God in his life. Why? Nobody can be sinlessly perfect. Nobody can live a life without sin. And yet, even though sin happened in the life of David, the life of David was characterized by obedience to the will of God. That is why he was called a man after God's own heart. Let us look that we can see that David loved God's word. David loved God's word. Look at Psalms 119 verse number 97. Psalms 119 verse 97. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. So we can see in the Psalms that David expresses his uh, sentiment of his great love for the word of God. He says, oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. So what David is basically saying is that every day his life is being permeated by the word of God. In Joshua, the Bible says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and night. Amen? So, meaning to say, though David is doing so many things in his life, the word of God is always in his mind. He's always meditating upon the word of God. Why? So that he can observe to do according to those things that are written in the word of God, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You see, success can only be found in the word of God. Without the word of God, we cannot be successful. Actually, the truth of the matter is this. If not for the word of God, we have a wrong estimate of success. The word defines success in a different way. For them, success is having a lot of money. For them, success is being known by many people. To them, success is uh, possessing power that can control other people. To them, success is being able to buy everything that you want to buy in life. For them, success is going to places where you want to go. To them, success is being known by the world. But ladies and gentlemen, for God, success, number one, is to be saved. What shall it profit a man even if he gained the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? For God's success is denying self. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. For God's success is dying daily. Paul says, I die daily. For him success is forgetting what we know about this world and taking everything that we can know about God. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Success for the world is going up while success for God is going down. Because when you humble yourself upon the mighty hand of God, then He will lift you up. And if God lifted you up, nobody can put you down. That is success in the estimation of God. But we have become so worldly. That we do not really understand the word of God anymore. Even those people that are serving the Lord. To them success is having a beautiful building. To them success is having a large crowd. To them success is having uh, expensive uh, uh, things inside the church. To them success is being known and being invited as a conference speaker. In many other churches, to them success is even going out of the ministry and going into the field of politics. Ladies and gentlemen, success ought to be according to the word of God. And to be successful, we must leave Jesus in our lives and ourselves down and not seen by men. Yun po yung tagumpay na sinasabi ng Biblia. Kaya lang, hindi na tayo nagmimeditate kasi ng word of God. Hindi na natin pinag-aaralan ng Word of God. Kaya ang mga pastor ngayon, pag hindi sila kilala, awang-awa sa sarili nila. Na parang wala silang ma sa buhay. 
Mga kapatid, sa Judgment City of Christ, baka magtaka tayo yung mga pastor na nasa bundok, na mga nasa liblib na lugar, pero kontento sa kanilang ginagawa, mas marahi pa ang reward kesa doon sa mga nasa syudad na walang inasikaso kung hindi itaas ang sarili nila. David says, I meditate upon the Word of God day and night. Why? Loving God's Word is the only way that we can find good success. Without the Word of God, there can never be success in our life. Look at Psalms 119, 47 to 48. And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved. And I will meditate in thy statutes. Why does he meditate upon the word of God? Because he loved the commandment of God. Most of the times we hate commands. Why? Because we want to do only those things that we desire or love to do. And sometimes commandments are grievous that we do not want to obey them. Sometimes they are hard that we do not want to obey them. But ladies and gentlemen, the person who loves the word of God will obey the word of God even though it is hard. And sometimes they do not even understand. Do you believe that Noah understood everything but when he was commanded to build an, build an ark there was no rain during that time and he was commanded to build the ark up there on the mountains where there is no possibility whatsoever that there's going to be water but he obeyed why? because it is the word of God when you obey you do not look for comfort when you obey, you do not look for uh, things that will make you comfortable. When you obey, you obey no matter what. You obey God even though it is contrary to your ear. You obey God even though you do not understand. You obey God even though it seems impossible. Why? Because our God is the God of the impossible. The Bible says nothing is impossible with God. That is why, you see, Look at the Israelites. They are going to battle Jericho. Jericho is a walled city. Tremendous wall. A very high wall. A very formidable wall. And they were commanded to go around it. Not saying anything. And commanded to go around seven times and shout. Who would have thought that the wall of Jericho will crumble down? Why? Because with God, nothing is impossible. Amen? Kung kayo nung umiikot sila, may isang nagmurmur. Wala, hindi ba pagsak yung wall? Right? So we obey God. David loved the word of God. He loved the statutes of God. He meditated upon it day and night. And ladies and gentlemen, this love for the word of God is due to the fact that the word of God helped us in many ways. Look at Psalms 119 verse 11. The word of God will help us from sin. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. You see, when we are far from the word of God, we are near sin. When we are near the word of God, we are far from sin. That is why the more we read the word of God, the more we realize that we are wretched. The more we realize that we are wretched, the more we appreciate the grace of God. The more we see the grace of God, the more we want to obey God. The more we want to obey God, the more we see that we cannot do it. And because we cannot do it, then we trust the word of God. We trust the Lord and the Holy Spirit help us. That's the only way that we can glorify God. So we need to understand that apart from the word of God, we cannot have victory over sin. We cannot have victory over the darts of the devil because only God can help us overcome sin in our lives. Amen? Not only that, look at verse number 50. 
This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. You see, whenever you are sad, whenever you are afflicted, whenever you are in the midst of crisis, you see, the word of God can comfort you. God has given us another comforter, that's the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit can effectively comfort us as we know the word of God. Because the word of God will be applied by the Holy Spirit in our hearts, giving us an assurance that all things work together for good to them that love God. That we may not understand what is happening, but what is happening will end up well with us. Amen? Even though it may not be a biblical song in its entirety, the song It Is Well With My Soul gave a testimony that no matter what happens, we must believe that God's hand is fashioning us in a way that at the end everything is going to be well. Amen? Maaring hindi maganda yung dinadaanan natin. Maaring, Pastor, pati pagkamatay ko, hindi maganda. Hindi yan ang pinag-uusapan. Ang pinag-uusapan, pagkatapos nun, lahat maganda. Ang pinag-uusapan, yung, yung makakakita ng ating pinagdaanan ay pwedeng magkaroon ng pagbabago ng halimbawa sa kanilang buhay. But whenever we are afflicted, David said, I go to the Word of God and God's Word comfort me. Nung, nung ako, nag, nag-i-struggle ako sa aking andropos. Kapag ako'y inaatake ng, ng panic, kapag yung phobia ko ay nararanasan kong dumarating sa akin, I go to the Word of God. And it suits my soul. It comforts me. Why? Because the Word of God is quick and powerful. It is alive. And it is powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can help us. And remember David, David experienced so many adversities in life. He was even about to be stoned to death. But because of the word of God, he was comforted. So that is why he loved the word of God. Not only that, look at verse 165. Great peace of day which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. See? If you know the word of God, you have great peace. Why? Because a person who knew God's word will never be surprised by everything that is happening. Why? Because all are written in the word of God. Amen? Hindi na nasusurpresa. Hindi na bibigla yan. Alam niya kung bakit nangyayari ang mga nangyayari. And because of that, there is great peace of mind because of the law of God and nothing shall offend them. Hindi ka ma-offend. Hindi ka ma ma discarel Why? Because you know the word of God. And that is the reason why David was called a man after God's own heart because he loved the word of God. Parang ganito lang yan eh. Yung mga anak na nasunod sa magulang, yan yung mga anak na malapit sa puso ng magulang. Sapagkat yung salita ng magulang, binibigyan niya ng pagpapahalaga. And if we are going to give that importance to the word of God, then God will love us and will honor us more by the grace of God. Amen? Kaya kailangan, mahalin natin ang word of God. At makikita natin yan that the Lord Jesus Christ loved the word of God. We can see that in Matthew chapter 4, when he was tempted by the devil, thrice he quoted from the word of God. So you see that even though Jesus Christ is already God, he still clings to his own words. Because word means something and important to him. So we can see that whenever the Lord Jesus Christ speaks of anything, he says, those that were given to me by my Father. So now this is the question. Do we hide the word of God in our hearts? Do we meditate upon the word of God? Whenever we are afflicted, do we seek the counsel of God's word? Or we go to people and trust in their words rather than first the word of God? Do we meditate 
upon the word of God. Do we find peace whenever we read the word of God? Ladies and gentlemen, if we are going to make the word of God a mighty part of our life, then we can see that the mighty God will play a big part in our lives. Amen? Not only that, the reason why David was called a man after God's own heart is because David loved prayer. David loved prayer. Not only that he loves the word of God, because whenever he reads the word of God, God is speaking to him, but David also wants to talk to God. He wanted to have communion with God. He wanted to have a two-way conversation with God. Look at Psalms 116 verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Amen. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Don't you love to talk to a person who listens to you? So, oh, makipag-usap sa tao, hindi ka matitignan. Nakikipag-usap, kakinakausap mo yung tao, iba yung iniisip, yung parang, parang wala kang kausap, parang kausap mo yung hangin. You will not love to talk to that person. But you know, David saw that God is a very good listener. And not only that God is a good listener, but whenever God listens and your desire is according to His will, then God will answer our prayers. Amen? Ayaw mo pang, ayaw mo pang kausapin taong pag kinakausap mo may sinabi kang may kailangan ka ibinibigay. Amen? So, that, that's why David says, I love to pray. Why? Because God is listening to me. God is answering my prayer. God is doing things that will make me a better person. We are commanded to ask, to seek, to knock, and then we're going to find. That is what the Bible says. So, he loves to pray. And the reason why he loves to pray, it was because God had greatly blessed him in every situation of his life. In whenever, whenever things are smooth, whenever things are rough, whenever things are favorable, whenever circumstances are unfavorable, whenever David called to God, then God will always come to his rescue. And that is the reason why David loved prayer. It was based on the goodness of God. Look at verses 12 and 13. What shall I render unto the Lord for all His benefits toward me? Is God not good to us? Is God not good to you and to me? Is God not good to all men? You see, God's grace is unlimited. God's grace is not a respecter a person. Because there is what we call God's grace before salvation. The Bible says God has given us life, has given us breath, and has given us all things. We do not deserve life because God knew that we will rebel against Him. We do not deserve these things because God knew we're going to destroy the world. We do not deserve breath because God knew that we're going to waste it. But God is gracious that He had given everything to man. Alam naman ng Diyos magkakasara sa iba't adan, amen? Pero ginawa niya pa rin ang garden, nilagay pa rin sila ron. Binagay pa rin lahat ng kanilang pangapangailangan. Why? Because God is a good God. And God is good all the time. Ang Diyos nagpapaulan, hindi lang sa manan ng palatay, kahit hindi manan ng palatay, umuulan. Pinapatubo ng Diyos ang pananim, hindi lang ng mga manan ng palatay, kahit ang mga hindi manan ng palatay. God is good to all men. But there is a special grace that God has given to those who are saved. And that grace will summarize our life. Our life, eternal life, started with grace 
and our life will end in grace. There is living grace and there is dying grace. You see, we can see that in the life of Stephen. When he was being stoned to death, the grace of God was there. He did not even feel the pain. But what he saw is the Lord standing up in heaven, welcoming him because of what he has done for the Lord. And that is the grace of God. His life started with grace and his life ended with grace. Don't you know that God has given us the grace to serve? Because without God, we cannot serve him. Paul says, I praise God that he giveth me the grace and enabled me and counted me worthy to be in the ministry. Don't you know that without God's grace, we cannot accomplish anything good in life? Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. Our God is a God who gives us all of the benefits that we have in life. That is why whenever we, we complain, whenever we whine, whenever we murmur in serving God, then we are not appreciating God's grace to us. You see, David says, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? He says, what can I do? And you see, you know the answer of David? In verse number 13, he said, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will tell people how to be saved. He says, I am going to call upon the name of the Lord. Prayer shows that we depend upon the Lord. Yung ba alam ang, ang, ang prayerful na tao, powerful kasi yung power ng Diyos ang maghahari sa kanyang buhay. Ang tao nagpe-pray ay taong mapagpakumbaba sapagkat sinasabi niya, Panginoon, hindi ko kaya. Kayo po ang may kaya nito. That's why the posture of prayer, of prayer is important. We usually bow our heads. We usually kneel. When praying to God, why? It shows humility. It shows that we are submissive to God. And if we're submissive to God, then God will help those people who humble themselves. Amen? So David is prayerful because of the fact that God is a good God. And it was based upon the truth that prayer will bring us closer to God. Look at 145 verse number 18. Psalm 145 verse number 18. The Bible says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon Him. To all that call upon Him in truth. You see, the only time that we are nearest to God is when we pray. Amen? And the only time that God is nearest to us is when we pray. He says, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. Whenever we kneel and bow our heads and close our eyes, we are in front of the throne of God. That's why we are nearest to God when we pray. And the reason why David loved to pray is because that was the time that he can feel the presence of God. Pastor, do not trust on your feelings. Yes, I know. But feeling is a part of having faith in God. A faithful person is a happy person. Alam nga naman, may pananampalataya ka sa Diyos, malungkot ka. Alam yung problema natin mga Baptist, kasi kinuha ng charismatic, ayaw na natin. Eh sa atin unang binigay yun. Sa atin kinuha ng charismatic yun. At nung kunin, pinag- hinayaan na natin sa kanila. You know, the most neglected person of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. Do you know why Baptists do not want to talk much about the Holy Spirit? It's because we are afraid to be branded Pentecostals. Why? Because when we talk about the Spirit, it involves our experiential uh, uh, experiences and in every experience, feeling is a part of it. Ayaw natin. Kaya sa Baptists, o oh, yung, oh praise God, Pentecostal. Charismatic. Parang wala na tayong karapatang magpakita ng emotion sa Diyos. Alam mo ba si David nung nagpakita ng emotion sa Diyos? Alam mo ginawa? Nagsasayaw, nakahubad pa. Huwag niyo sabi mo, magubad kahit magsayaw. Pero David,
David showed that emotion is spontaneously to God. Bakit? God gave us the emotion so that even our emotion must be subjected to the glory of God. Di ba? Hindi mo masaya mga tao sumasampalataya sa Diyos. Masama bang pakita mong masaya ka? Hindi. Kaya lang minsan ina-associate natin sa mga ganung bagay. Pero maliwanag ito na kapag ka ikaw ay malapit sa Diyos at ang Diyos malapit sa iyo, meron kang kasiyan! And there is nothing wrong to show that emotion with God. Pag nagtaas ng kamay, Pentecostal na. Parang yung teacher rabin. Ma, may I go out? Pentecostal ka, sige. <laughs> Hindi, parang, di ba pag may dumating dito, nag-pray, gumanon, ako, Pentecostal yan. Maaring oo. Pero pag baptist ka, gumanon ka, Pentecostal ka ba? <laughs> Hindi, sabi nga ng Bible, lifting up holy hands. Walang masama. Tiyakin mo lang na Rexona won't let you down. Amen? Mahirap naman yung taas ka ng taas ng kamay. And it is you they're talking about. <laughs> Wag naman. Ayusin mo rin at tiyakin mo na walang power <laughs> na lalabas na hindi maganda whenever you are lifting up your hands to God. Walang masama. Meron nga ano eh. At Baptist na Baptist talaga ito. Isa sa napuntahan ko niya. Lalo na sa South East. Sabihin ko sa iyo. Sabihin nyo lahat ng Baptist ng Pentecostal. Eh kapag ka nag-preach, eh, gano'n na nang gano'n na yung mga yun eh. Amen, preacher! Yeah! O gumaganon sila eh. eh. Kung fundamentalism lang ang pinag-uusapan, may hirapan ka makakita ng mas separatist sa mga yun. Pero they are open in showing their appreciation to God. Hindi nila gawa, gawa yun. Hindi tulad ng kilala ko sa Pilipinas, gawa, gawa yun. Sabi pa nga, magdala kayo ng panyo, ganun ninyo. Aba nag-preach. Yung gawa, gawa na yun. Bakit? Kasi may choreography na eh. Ang ating pagsamba sa Diyos at ang ating pagpapakita ng emosyon is spontaneous. Kung paanong inilagay ng Diyos, ganun, nalalabas sa ating puso. And ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was also a man of prayer. Amen? We can see that whenever there is a chance, the Lord Jesus Christ will go in a private place and pray. Look at Luke chapter 5, verse number 16. Luke 5, 16. And He withdrew Himself into the wilderness and prayed. Kita niyo sa Bible mga kapatid, ang prayer laging ganito kadalasan. Umaalis sa karamihan. Nag-iisa. Nagpe-pray. Utos nga ng Diyos eh, pumunta ka sa loob ng closet at doon mag-pray ka secretly. At ang Diyos that heard your prayer secretly will reward thee openly. Kaya kung nagtataka sa mga Baptist, gusto mag-pray rally sa araw pa ng Senado. Hindi ko makuha. Hindi abot ng isip ko kung bakit ganun. Ang abot ng isip ko ito, nagpapaka-spiritual para hangaan ng mga tao. Ladies and gentlemen, praying is lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. Sabi nga ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians 14, when I pray with tongue, I pray with my spirit and I talk only to God. Pero yung pagsasalita is for the edification of people. So hindi, kaya nga, ang pinaka walang kwentang conference sa buong mundo, yung prayer and fasting conference. Biro mo, Pinapaalam yung lahat na, na nando doon nagpa-fasting kayo. Ano sabi ng Bible? When you fast, mag-ahit ka, maligo ka, magmukha kang masaya. Hindi ko, tulad ng mga pariseyo, when they fast, hindi sila mag-ahit, hindi sila maliligo, hindi sila mag- talagang Why? The Bible says they have their reward. Hinangaan ka ng tao, tapos na yun. Hanggang doon na lang. Kaya nga pag mayroong prayer and fasting conference, napapailing na lang ako. Dahil pinapakita ng mga taong yon at yung mga pumupunta doon, 
kung gaano sila ka-spiritually ignorant. Pero, prayer and fasting conference para bagang napaka-spiritual ng dating. Sapagat sila'y nagpe-pray at sila'y nagpa-fast. Okay lang yung prayer conference. Walang fasting. Yeah, malapit na naman yung kay Gutlay. Sa 21 yata yun. May prayer conference na naman. Kaya kung sinabi niya prayer and fasting, di ako pupunta. Biro mo gutom. Ang haabot. Huwag na lang. <laughs> Kayo na lang. <laughs> o diba? kaya atin ako lang yung prayer. <laughs> yung fasting. Wag. <laughs> Aalis na ako pagka magpa-fasting na kayo. So that is what we need to understand. Napakaraming kamangmangan na nangyayari ngayon. Why? Because we do not really study the Word of God. And we do not pray to God that God will give us illumination. Meron pang isa, talagang an, hindi ko alam kung matapang, hindi ko alam kung, hindi ko maintindihan. Ipinus pa na si Pacquiao ay nagsalita sa gathering ng mga Baptist pastors sa Iloilo. Sabi pa, go preach! Manny Pacquiao, go preach! Kahit tinanong ko eh, Baptist ba ka ako si Manny Pacquiao? Sabi niya sa hindi po, ano siya? Pentecostal. Sabi niya sa anong gamit niyang Bible? KJV ba? Hindi, NIV. Tapos pinatayo mo sa likuran ng pulpito mo. Bakit kasi siya si Manny Pacquiao? Eh kung siya si Manny Pacquiao, patatayuin mo ba sa pulpito? Eh kung siya si Manny Pakpak, patatayo mo ba sa pulpito? Sabi ko, we are showing double standard. Dahil kilala, kahit Pentecostal, kahit NIV ang gamit, tatayo, makikitig ang mga pastor, hangaan, papalakpakan. Pero yung iba, hindi. Ito yung namang isa. Si Tongressman Atras, nagpa-picture pa, kasama si Kibuloy. the father of first fruits and the father of the universe. Hindi <laughs> mo na talaga maintindihan itong mga snacking blades na ito? Oo, oh, ma-picture. Ma-picture silang dalawa. Magkatikit mukha nila. Sabi ko, magkapalit kayo ng mukha. Sa bagay, payag yung isa. May kingdom. Magkapalit man. Hindi maintindihan. Meron pa isang picture eh. Ano pa yung picture? At least, buti pa yung si Pastor Bonyo at saka yung kapatid niya. Ah, si, ah, si Gloria at saka si Kibuloy yan eh. eh. At least, hindi an equal yoke. Walang problema. Hindi nga lang kagandahan lalaki yung dalawa, pero sa mga meses nila, magandang lalaki sila. Katulad din natin. Nakakalungkot mga kapatid. Why? Because we have forsaken God's word, we have forsaken prayer, and because of that, our self came to stay on the throne. At kung ano yung, nalulungkot ako, sabi ko nga, another fundamentalism thrown out of the window. Ngayon pa naman, pastor na yun, napaka, ano niya, humble, talagang prudent ang life, hindi mo makikita ang nagkaroon ng pagpapasasa sa kanyang buhay. Pero kasi yung Diablo, hahanapan ka ng butas eh. Sabi ng Diablo, may butas, makikita ko yan. At nakakita siya. Kasi, sino ba naman ang hindi magkakagusto kay Pacquiao? Ako gusto ko si Pacquiao eh. Bilang tao. Bilang boksingero. Pero hindi ko gusto yung denominasyon niya. Hindi ko gusto yung patutuo niya kasi yung patutuo niya parang good works ang kaligtasan niya. Tapos, itong mga fundamental baptist ang tawag sa sarili nila ay hangang-hanga. Bakit? Yan na kasi nasa popular Christianity na tayo. Palahanga. Pag analigtas doktor, hangang-hanga tayo. Pero pag ang naligtas, basurero. Parang wala lang. 
Pag nagsuko ng buhay, engineer. Special. Pero pag out of school youth, nagsuko ng buhay, wala kasing magawa sa buhay yan eh. Yun na yung kalagahin natin ngayon. Bilang mga mana ng palataya. Yan ang kalagayan natin ngayon sa Christianity. Hindi na importante sa atin yung hindi na natin pininiwalaan yung pag may nag-repent, may kasiyahan sa langit. Sa atin kailangan ng nag-repent, may sinabi para magkaroon ng kasiyahan. Sabi mo si Pastor, Pastor, sampu po naligtas dun sa payatas. Ah, good. Pastor, naligtas yung doktor. Talaga, hali ka patingin tayo. Ganun na ganun. Malaking pakinabang natin kay Doc. Ano na tayo? Self-centered Christianity. Kaya pag mayaman ang pumasok, kandarapa tayo kung saan uupo. Pero kapag ka mahirap ang pumasok, adun sa may ano, yun, may mga surot doon doon pa upo niya. Pag mahirap umupo sa harapan, Ah, uh, ano? Ah. Uh, Doon ka kasi may uupo mamaya diyan. Okay? Sige na ko pala pagkakaroon. Oh, hindi ba? Pero kapag ka mayaman, upuan mo 'yan. Ah, ah, diyan lang ho kayo, kaya alis diyan. Ayos lang ho sa amin 'yan. Nakakalungkot. Kaya ang tanong ko dun sa po, sabi ko, paano ko merong lesser person na NIV rin ng gamit? at Pentecostal din, iimbitahan ba ninyo at patatayuin nyo sa likuran ng pulpito at enthusiastically makikinig din ba kayo? Pasa na yung nasabi, pumunta siya pa kayo dito, hindi mo pag-preach yan? Hindi, bakit ako pag-preach yan? Ah, oh, pastor, discrimination. Hindi ako nag-discriminate. Hindi ako nagko-compromise. Iniingatan natin yung pulpit. Hindi tayo mas mabuting tao kesa kay Pacquiao marahil. But this is the church of God. And it must be protected by the grace of God. So nakakalungkot. Bakit? Kasi inalis na natin yung word of God. Inalis na natin yung prayer. Kaya we are falling for everything that is happening now. The life of the Lord Jesus Christ is filled with prayer. And even when He was hanging on the cross, He uttered seven prayers na pinipreach natin tuwing magmamahal na araw at ang sabi natin the seven last words. Eh, hindi man seven words yun. Yun lang, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Eleven na yun. Eh. Isa pa lang yun. Yun naman, eleven last sayings. Ayan. <laughs> eleven last prayers. Uh, seven last prayers. Kung ano man yan. But what's important is that prayer is a life. It's part of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Luke 18.1, look at what the Lord Jesus Christ says. The Bible says, And He spake a parable unto them to this end, that man ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen? Always. Sabi ni Paul, pray without ceasing. Man ought always to pray and not to faint. Naalala ko na naman yung kwento, medyo nakakatawa. Pastor, ayaw na naman ang nakakatawa. Umuwi na kayo. Ako, gusto ko nang nakakatawa pa rin, kahit pa paano. Merong inutusan yung ano. Sabi niya, pinturahan mo yan. Ha? Binigyan ng pera. Sabi niya, sobra to. Bibili ko ng pintura kanya. Para dumami, lalagyan ko na maraming thinner. Tsaka ako pipintura. Ah, hindi nyo na karkula. Pag may thinner, mapusyaw yung pintura. So, mas maraming ulit. Hanggang hindi natapos, nagkulang. Naku, kanya yari ako kay father, kanya. Sapat pa naman yung binigay na pera para sa pintura. So, habang tinitignan niya, sabi niya, Panginoon, patawarin niyo ako. Ano ang gagawin ko? Sabi ng pare na rinig, nilaki rin yung boses, Repaint and thin no more. <laughs> 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 
Pangina talaga ng utak niyo. <laughs> hindi ba? Hindi ba sabi sa Bible, repent and sin no more. <laughs> sabi nung pare, repent and sin no more. <laughs> Kaya ayoko na nagpapatawa. <laughs> Ato mo talaga ako. <laughs> Aray ko. Sabi niya, Repaint! <laughs> And thin! <laughs> no more! Kanya. Saan niyo ngayon lang ako? Uyak sa buhay ko na pa nagpipreach. Sa tawa pa. Ayan. Okay, so... He was he he loved prayer, amen. He loves prayer. That's why he was called a man after God's own heart. How about us? Do we love to pray? Hmm. How many times do we pray? The Bible says always. Jesus says that men ought always to pray. Sabi ng mga babae, okay. Sa lalaki lang yan, no. Generic yun. Sa lahat ng tao. Amen? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. And not to faint. Pray without ceasing. So if David loves prayer, Jesus loves prayer, then every child of God must also love prayer. Amen? Next, the reason why David was called a man after God's own heart is because he loved to praise the Lord. Ano naman na isang kinatatakutan natin? He loves to praise the Lord. Sa mga Baptist, parang tabu yung praise the Lord. Parang pag may nagsabi, Hallelujah. Pag may, uh, uh, gusto ko magpatuto, praise God, Hallelujah. Charismatic ka natin ganyan, eh, no? <laughs> Talagang tayo mga Baptist, hindi tayong judgmental. <laughs> Parang hindi, hindi na pwedeng gamitin eh. eh. Si David, he loves to praise God. Look at Psalms 119, verse number 164. Ito sabi ni David. Seven times a day do I praise thee. Sipin mo yan. Because of thy righteous judgments. Ano seven times complete? Meaning to say, all the day. He is praising God. Why? Because the righteous and the judgments of God are always righteous all the day long. Amen. So we need to realize that. Okay, si Daniel nga, he prayed three times a day. Pero si David, he praises God seven times a day. So his life is characterized by praising the Lord. Don't you know there are so many uh, reasons why we need to praise God? We need to praise God because God is a righteous God. Because God is a holy God. Because God is a loving God. Because God is a gracious God. Because God is an immutable God. Because God is an almighty God. Because God heals. Because God answers our prayers. Because God promises us good things. Because God is protecting us. Because God will never leave us nor forsake us. Because God is the God, the living God, the only living God that we serve in our life. So many ways, so many reasons why we need to praise God. We need to praise God for answered prayers. We need to praise God for our afflictions. We need to praise God even there are problems. We need to praise God even if we do not understand things. We need to praise God because God is worthy of our praise. Kaya sabi ni David, the whole day, I can find ways to praise God. He, we, we can praise God because of creation. We can praise God because of the flowers and the trees. We need to praise God because of little children, because of adults. We, everything, everywhere we look in this world, it shows the handiwork of God. And because of that, that is enough reason to praise God. How much more praising God because he saved us from a horrible place called hell. That's why it, it is so sad when, when man can only look at 
the negative things of life and complain to God than to tell God in spite of all of these things, oh God, I praise you because you are God. Amen? Parang, parang yung tao lang yan eh. Bagamat hindi naman nakakatawa to, inspiring naman. Nung hindi pa siya safe, madalas siya magpunta sa garden. Every time na tumitingin siya sa bulaklak, yung rose, sabi niya, nakakaawa naman itong bulaklak na rose. Sapagkat napakaganda niya pero meron siyang mga tinik na dahilan kung bakit hindi lahat ng tao ay ninanasa siya. Abay, naligtas yung taong to bumalik sa garden at tumingin sa mga bulaklak at sabi niya, napakapalad naman ng mga tinik kasi meron silang rosas. Eh kung tinik lang yun, may kukuha ba nun? Wala. But they have a rose. And ladies, ladies, listen, ladies and gentlemen, no matter who we are, what we are, what our life is, we are so blessed because in our life, we have God. Because left alone, we are nothing, we're unworthy. The Bible even says, Jacob is a worm. But when God came into his life, he became Israel, the Prince of God. You see, that is the difference. Kaya, kaya mga kapatid, wag na wag naman natin, please, i-compare ang mana ng palataya sa hindi. Dahil ano man ang buhay ng mana ng palataya, bagamat hindi dapat mapangit o masama, nasa puso niya ang banal na spirito ng Diyos. And there is simply no comparison. But David, he prays God. He loves to praise God. Every day he says completely, I praise the Lord. Why? Look at Psalms 95, verses 1 to 7. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Oh, pag rock and roll, charismatic. Totoo yun. Yung rock dito, hindi yung kind of music. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In His hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is His also. The sea is His, and He made it, and His hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand. Today, if ye will hear His voice. You see, David praised God because of His greatness and His loving kindness. You see, we are serving the Creator. David said, He is my maker. Without God, we will not be here. Without God, we will not be saved. Without God, we are not going to be who we are. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. It is all because of God. It is all because of God's loving kindness, because of His greatness in our lives. And look at Psalms 104, verse number 33. Psalms 104, verse number 33. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. You see, yung buhay niya, araw-araw punong-puno ng meditation ng Word of God. Di ba? Yung buhay niya, araw-araw punong-puno ng praise sa salitaan ng Diyos. Yung buhay niya, araw-araw punong-puno ng prayer. Tinan mo yung buhay ni David, ha? Pero, nagkasala pa rin siya. Nadaya pa rin siya ng Diablo. Nangalo niya pa rin siya, pumatay pa rin siya, nagyabang pa rin siya. Bagamat punong-puno na dito, ano pa kaya tayo na kulang-kulang ng mga bagay na ito? Amen? At minsan nagtataka pa tayo, bakit nagawa ko yun? Bakit nangyari sa akin yun? Sagot, 
kulang tayo ng pag-ibig sa salita ng Diyos. Kulang tayo sa pagmamahal sa panalangin. Kulang tayo sa pagluwalhati sa Panginoong Diyos. Kaya nangyayari yun at nagagawa natin ang mga iyon. And we should not be surprised when these things are happening. Because we, our life is not filled with praise, with prayer, and with the Word of God. And we can also see in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 11, 25 to 26. We can see here, and at the time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. So he praised God because of the goodness of the Father. He's part of the Trinity, and yet he prays the Father in his life because he loved to praise like David. Actually, David is like Jesus who loves to praise. Look at Matthew 26, verse number 30. David is a singer, a songwriter. He loves to sing. And the Bible says, And when they had sung on him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Even the Lord Jesus Christ sang with the church during his time. He sang praises unto God. And as Christians, question, do we delight in praising God? Do we delight in singing songs to God? Do we take time to praise God even in our prayers? Our activity our life must be like the life of David that everything that happened to his life is about God. Look at Psalms 147 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. Amen? So it is good. So when we are singing, we need to sing. Because we are praising God. But if we will only sing for the sake of singing, better not sing. Because we are devoid of praise unto God. Next, David loved what? He loves what? The Word of God. He loves? And then he loves? To praise God. Next, David loved unity among the brethren. Kaya God after, uh, man after God's own heart eh? because he loved unity look at Psalms 133 verse 1 133 verse 1 and sabi ni David behold pagmasdan mo ka ni David behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity you see, David is going for unity. He loves the unity of the people of God. He knew the value of good friendship and unity. And this was exemplified in his relationship with Jonathan. Because of that uh, neatness of their heart, because of that friendship and unity, so many good things happened between the both of them. And even when they finally separated, that unity of their heart remains intact in life. That even the posterity of Jonathan was blessed during the kingdom of David. Yun ang pagkakaiba ng unity. Kaya pag tayo nagkakaisa, magkaiwahiwalay man tayo, may pagpapala. At ano yung involved sa unity? Ang involved sa unity yung pagkakapareho ng kaisipan, lalo tigit sa salita ng Diyos. We have the same mind, the mind of Christ. That is why the Bible says that in order for us really to serve God, there must be a renewing of our mind from being worldly to the mind of Christ. Because if we have the mind of Christ, then we have one mind. And that is of Christ. Amen? Kasi kung kanya-kanyang isip, iba-iba isip natin eh. Iba-iba yung palagay natin eh. Iba-iba yung pananaw natin. But if we have the mind of Christ, then there is unity of purpose. Unity of desire. Unity of goal. And there is unity in everything that we do. There will be transparency. 
if we are united. Hindi tayo nagtataguan ng plano ng isa't isa. Kasi united tayo. Hindi yung, kunyari, united ako pero meron akong sariling plano. Hindi nila alam yun. Ako lang nakakaalam nun. Hindi, paano tayo nagkaroon ng, un- ng unity? Meron ka palang sariling agenda. Naalala ko na naman si Batdoy. Yung dating boyfriend daw ni Maribel. Nag-aaral kami sa Bible school. Pare-pareho kaming walang pera. Kasi, wala kaming support sa church. Actually, first year, ang church hindi nagsusupport ng Bible student. Kasi, ang sabi ni pastor, baka napagaya ka lang, sayang ang pera. Dahil usually, first year, marain na kukwit. Pag second year, susuportahan ka na niya. Ang support niya, 15 pesos a month. Sabi ko, baka yumaman tayo. Baka kung saan-saan tayo makarating sa 15 pesos. A month, ha? Bagay na, sa langit na si pastor, hindi niya dinig ito. Eh, yun lang ang pera namin. Kaya ako nagtitriwiler ako ng Sabado-linggo ng gabi para may pandagdag sa pamasahe tsaka pandagdag sa pagkain. Eh, minsan, walang masyadong pasahero. Ang mahirap pa sa gabi, mga pasahero, lasing. Yung mga umuwi ng madaling araw. Minsan, ang bayad sa'yo, babangaging ka pa. O, oh, ganun. Kaya minsan, may pera, minsan wala. Aba, itong si Batdoy, talagang laging... Ano kami? Sosyo-sosyo. Sabi niyo, wala akong pera eh. Sige, kami nang bahala sa'yo. Aba niyo, lahat kami maubusan ng pera. Hindi namin makita. Naglakat kami, magana kami pagkain. Nakita namin sa bakery, kumakain mag-isa. Yung pala ang ginagawa niya, hindi nagko-contribute, tinatago yung pera niya. At pag wala na kami pera, siya lang ang may pera. Siya lang ang kakain. Hindi unity yun. Anong tawag doon? Oneity. Mm, siya lang mag-isa niya, oneity. mag lang siya. So in, that is not unity. Ganun din sa church. Amen? Wala po akong pambigay. Pero, kain ka ng kain sa labas. Wala po akong pang-contribute, pastor. Ilibre niyo na lang ho ako. Pagkatapos, kung ano na binibili mo. Mm. Unity ba yun? Oh. Ano yung unti ang contribution mo? Oh. Pare-pare tayong member ng church. May mga plano tayo, may mga goal tayo. Iba naman yung gusto mong gawin. Oh, hindi unity yun. Halimbawa tayong mga preacher, may mga goal tayo. Meron ka palang sariling agenda. Oh. Hindi unity yun. Ano tawag doon? Hindi ko alam. Oh, pero hindi maganda yun. Amen? Why? Because David, he says, how good. Amen? How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Kaya ang unity, you and I together. Yeah! Amen? Yun ang ibig sabihin ng unity. May kasiyahan sa bandang huli. Natutuwa ka kasi you and I together. Yeah. Oh. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng unity. And David knew the value of unity. And he also knew the terrible pain of division. You see, division in the body is not a good thing. Look at second. If we will read 2 Samuel chapter 13, we can see that uh, his children, Amnon and Absalom, killed each other. Why? Because there was division in his home. Pag may division, merong laban. Pag may hindi pagkakakita mo, naging divided ang worship ni Cain at saka ni Abel. Ano ginawa ni, ni Cain kay Abel? kinain niya. Amen? Pinatay niya si ano? Si Abel, why? Because Abel is able to worship God and he can't. Ay, hindi ba? He can't. Kaya nagalit siya. Sabi niya, I can't. Pinatay niya si Abel. O kaya, 
hindi dapat tayo magkaroon ng disunity dito sa church. Kasi if you are not going to go with what the God desires to the church, then you are actually fighting or dividing the body of Christ. That is why it is good and pleasant to dwell together in it. The Bible says, how can two walk together? Oh. Except they be agreed. Nakakita ka ng dalawa, naglakad ng magkasama, hindi agree. Yung isa papunta sa kaluwa, yung isa sa kanan. Subukan nyo maglakad kayo, yung isa papunta sa kaluwa, yung isa kanan, tignan mo, hindi kayo sabay. Tama? Subukan mo yung paa mo, yung isa papuntang kaliwa. Yung isa papuntang kanan. Saan ka dadamputin? Saan? Sige, sagutin mo. Ha? Saan ka dadamputin? Sa orthopedic? Bakit? Ibiro mo. Ito, ito, hindi. Doon tayo. Hindi, doon ako. Hindi, doon tayo. Doon tayo. Oh, isipin mo yan. Abay, warak ka. Maya-maya. That's why unity is very important. And David knew the value of unity. And listen to me, even the Lord Jesus Christ prayed for unity. Look at John 17, verses 20 to 23. Ito yung sabi ng Panginoon. John 17, 20 to 23. Look at what the Lord Jesus Christ says. Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Look at verse 23. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me one this is yet a bentitress amen unity one oneness hindi kanya kanya pa sir yung kanya kanya isa isa rin yun eh hindi isa 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 lang that we may be united in everything that we do Paul says that Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 to 16. Ephesians 2, 13 to 16. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. 14. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace. Verse number 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby. Unity. Amen? He loves unity. That's why he was called a man after God's own heart. If you love unity and you pray for this church to be united and you are united with this church, will God not call you a man after his own heart? The heart of God is for us to be united and we desire to be united. Therefore, we are people after God's own heart. If we love unity in our midst question, are you displaying proper attitude necessary for us to be united in the Lord. Yung ba yung attitude na pinapakita mo? Or, nagpapakita ka ng attitude of dissension. Ay hindi, meron ako sarili dyan. Yun ang gagawin ko. Meron tayong individual soul liberty. Gagawin ko yun. Only, do not make your liberty as an occasion to sin or to make other people stumble. At isa pa, mga kapatid, kapag ka ang church nakakaisa, lalo na yung majority ng church, isa o dalawa lang kayo na hindi, baka naman kayo mali. Amen. 
Kasi sanay, sanay tayo sa you and me against the world eh. Hindi, sabi ng Bible, konti lang yung tama. Sa mga ano yun, unsaved. At saka save. Mas maraming unsaved kesa sa save. So ang save, konti, marami. Konti, di ba? Broad road, maraming nadaan. Narrow road, konti nadaan. Ang gusto na Diyos na sa konti, united. Huwag mo sasabihin sa konti, may konti pa. Ay may konti ka nakapagkaganon. Ina-prime yung principle, natapos na yung principle. Among the people, there are only few who will find the narrow way. And among those that are in the narrow road, the body of Christ, huwag mo nang sabihin yung minority, sila yung tama. Kasi minority na yun. Huwag ka nang minority na, leader ka pa ng minority. Yung mga minority leader na yun. Minsan hindi na natin naiintindihan kung ano yung puro hugot tayo. Anong nangyayari? Diba? We love unity and we love unity then we, then we are a man after God's own heart. Amen? And lastly, Amen. Tuwa na sila. Yung mga guto, matutuwa na. Yung mga inaantok, matutuwa na. Ako rin, tutuwa na kasi matatapos na. David hates every false way. David hates every false way. Psalms 119-104. Pastor, but karamihan Psalms. Eh, ito yung mga sulat ni David eh. Dito natin makikita yung attitude niya kung ba't siya natawag na man after God's own heart. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. That's why as a Christian and as a church, we hate false doctrine. Because it is a false way. We hate wrong attitudes. Because it is a false way. We hate those things that are not according to God and that is why sometimes we need to hate what we are doing. Because they are not according to the word of God. When David committed sin, did you see repentance in his heart? That when he committed that sin with Bathsheba and when the child became sick, he knew that is the hand of God then you can see him mourning. You can see him uh, in sackcloth. You can see him doing things in order to gain the favor of God. Why? Because he hated what he had done that forced the hand of God to take even that precious child from him. He hated every false way. Look at Psalms 101, 3-4. One hundred one, three to four. He says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. You can see separation here from the word. You can see here separation from wicked people. You can see here that he will not be unequally yoked together with unbeliever. He says, I will not know a wicked person. Not that you are, you are not acquainted with wicked person, but he is not going to be a friend or close to a person who is wicked. Look at verses 6 and 7 of the same chapter. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way shall serve me. Sabi niya, ang titignan ko, ang kasamahan ko, yung mga faithful, yung mga may takot sa Diyos, yung mga may pagmamahal sa Diyos, yung lumalakad in a perfect way. And these people will I allow to serve me as king. And then verse number 7, He that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. You see, his attitude of hating every false way 
make him selective in his friends and his activities with the people that he is with. Kaya mga kapatid, alam ko nagtatrabaho kayo. Alam ko sa trabaho nyo may mga unbelievers. Pero hindi kayo dapat nakikisama sa kanilang mga gawi. Sila ang dapat mong igawi dito. Hindi ikaw ang gagawi sa kanila. Sabi niya, yung mga nagsasalita ng kasinungalingan, hindi ko man patatagalin ng tingin ko sa kanila. I will not even look at them. Sabi ni David, And we know that God hates sins. Amen? And that is why David was called the man after God. Sa panahon natin, eto yan. Akala mo naman kung sino kang magsalita laban sa mga makasalanan. Ikaw! Wala ka bang nagawang kasalanan sa buhay mo? Ayun. Sa tao, pag may nagawa kang mali, wala ka ng karapatan. Sila kaya may karapatan, wala ba sila nagawang mali? Yan ang mainting yan. Kala mo kung sino ka na magsabi ng katuwiran, wala ka bang ginawang mali? Tignan mo ako, alam kong may ginawa akong mali, kaya sinasabi ko, puro kalikuan. Sabi, buti na yung sinasabi ng katuwiran, kahit may nagawang mali. Kaya dahil may ginawa kang mali, ang lahat ng sasabihin mo, kalikuan. Parang mali na, minali mo pa. Amen? Eh, mali, itama mo. Yun ang importante. So, nagiging judgmental tayo in a wrong way. You see, as long as we are adhering to the Word of God. Sabi ni David, oh, hindi ko man patatagal yung tignan ng mga masasamang tao. Pero siya adulterer, murderer, prideful person. Pero ba sinasabi niya to? Because there is a provision of God for repentance and when you repent, God will clean you and when you are clean, you start all over again. Oh, di ba? Eh, Pastor, ginadjads ako, kasama yun. Pero wag ka mag-alala dun sa mga yun. Dahil yung mga yun, kahit mabuti pa magsalita, hindi pakikinggan. Hinanapan lang ng excuse yung kanilang patuloy sa mali. Pero kapag ka yung mga may pagnanasa sa katuwiran, kahit na ano pa nakaraan mo, pakikinggan ka kasi mahal nilang salita ng Diyos. Kaya mong alalahan ninyon. Huwag mong abalahin ang sarili mo. Don't Use much of your time to those people who will not listen anyway. But spend your time to those people who would like to repent just like what you did in your life. And that is profitable unto them. Amen? May pakinabang. So Jesus also hated error and false way. Look at Matthew 21, 12 and 13. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seeds, a seeds of them that sold doves. And said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Ano kaya kung nandun ka, no? Sa eksenang yun. Ano kaya sasabihin mo sa Panginoon? bayolente naman pala itong taong to. Biro mong paghahagis yung mga ano, hindi nilang kausapin. Oh, huwag kayong magtinda rito, tahanan to ng ama ko. Eh, ba't pinaghahagis niya? Pinaglalatigo niya pa nga yung mga ano eh. Mga nagtitinda eh. Pinagtatapo niya yung mga tinda nila eh. Bakit? Eh, kasi sabi niya, nakasulat na yan eh. Alam niyo na yan eh. Tapos, ayaw niyo pa, eto, ang bagay sa inyo. So minsan, kapag ka pa ulit-ulit, napupwersa. Kaya kung sabihin, Pastor, napaka-violente mo. Pasigaw-sigaw ka agad. Kapatid, baka naman tatlong pong beses mo nang inulit yun. Eh siguro, yung sigaw, baka sakasakaling matanggal yung tutuloy na nakaharang at di mo naririnig. That might be the way. But look at the Lord Jesus. That's why He hated every false way. He hated those things and He showed His hatred to them and yet Jesus did not commit sin. 
So you can be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon thy wrath. Pwede ka magalit. Pero wag ka magkakasala. Ano ang tawag sa galit na hindi kasalanan? Holy anger. Ayan. Ba't ka nagalit? Kasi na holy mo. Holy anger. Amen. Hindi kasalanan yun. Hmm. Look at Matthew 23. Hindi na natin mapasahin yung buong chapter. Pero dito makikita natin yung disdain ng Panginoong Diyos sa mga Sadducees and Pharisees. Why? Because they are hypocrites. They are making a public show showing themselves holy when the truth of the matter is that their heart is filled with darkness. Ito yung mga false teachers. Ito yung mga false teaching. Ito yung mga false pretenses. And God hated those things. Question, do we hate every false ways? Minsan may nababasa tayong mali. Ganun na lang ba? Ako nung nabasa ko yung kay Manny Pacquiao, yung Pinos, eto agad ang pasok sa isip ko eh. Sasagutin ko ba ito? Hindi. Pwede mo sabihin, hayaan ko na lang ito. Wala ilang ako makakaaway na naman. Pero hindi pwede eh. Kasi mali talaga yun eh. O kaya, nag, ano ako, nag-comment ako, tapos may nag-comment, o, Una, wala na ko-comment. Puro amen eh. Amen. Go preach. Go, Senator Manny Pacquiao. Oh. Talagang puro puri. Ay, tanong ko, Baptist ba yan? Nagko-compromise niya ito. Ibig lang kayo na daing bumanat. Yung iba kasi naghihintay lang. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, kahit sa barkada, importante is starter. Gusto niyo away? O, walang mag-aaway. Pero pag may starter, away agad yan. Hmm. Ganun din minsan sa atin. Maraming tao, maraming na rin nakikitang mali sa mga doktrina at napakaraing bagay, wala lang nag start Tinan mo, nung mag-i-start tayong bumanggit ng mga pangalan, yung iba na banggit na rin ng pangalan. Pangalan nga lang natin ang binabanggit. <laughs> oh, di ba? <laughs> At least bumanggit na sila ng pangalan. Oh, simula na yon. O, oh, hindi ba? Naghihintay lang kasi ng lead yung iba. That's why if we know things and we know that there are things that are wrong, then let us not be afraid because even Jesus did that. You know, sometimes the problem is this. We are facing something is wrong and then we don't do anything about it. Not to talk against it is to agree with it. Ganun yun. Pastor, lahat ng maling makita natin, magkukomment tayo. Ba kung pwede, bakit hindi? Amen? Abay, kamumuhian tayo. Eh, ganun talaga. Ang Panginoon na, crucify. At anong sabi niya? Sabi ni Paul, we are partakers of God's suffering. Di ba ang ganda nun? Nakapareho mo siya, nakapartake ka nung hirap na dinanas ng Panginoon sa buhay dahil tumayo siya Lagi doon sa katotohanan. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Ano yung strongholds? Ito yung ginawa ng Diablo sa church mula nung umalis si Paul. Nag-establish siya ng stronghold dahan-dahan. At habang taon, bawat taon na dumadaan, yung stronghold niya, palakas ng palakas. Palayo ng palayo ang church sa katotohanan. At dumating ang panahon, sa panahon natin ngayon, ang church narito na, ang katotohanan nandu doon sa bandang pinompen na hindi na makita ng church. Na pag na ang katotohanan nakita mo, sinabi mo ngayon, ikaw ngayon yung bulaan sapagkat hindi nakita yung katotohanan. Bakit? Stronghold kasi yun. Pag stronghold, ibig sabihin, nabalot ka na. 
matindi na yung kapit at hindi mo na napapansin. Para sa iyo yun na yung tama dahil yun na yung nakamulatan mo. For the weapons of our warfare not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Dito tayo dapat sa Word of God. Kaya naalala niyo yung testing mindset? Test mo lahat dito. Kamukha na nakita mo si Pacquiao umattend, in-invite ng baptist ang gathering ng mga pastor at siya ay nag-preach. Teka, teka, teka. Ano ba sa Bible yun? Testing mindset. Mali yun na. Bakit? Kasi pinag-preach mo yung hindi nakakaalam ng katotohanan doon sa mga taong supposedly nakakaalam ng katotohanan na ang katotohanan kaya nag-preach si Pacquiao na hindi nakakaalam talaga ng katotohanan sa Biblia sa mga Pastor na dapat nakakaalam ng katotohanan, hindi pala nila alam yung totoo. So pareho para silang mga hindi nakakaalam ng katotohanan. Kaya ano narinig nila? Walang katotohanan. Oh. Yan nangyari. All of them are ignorant. Why? Because they did not test. Sabi pa ng iba, ay, hindi naman kami nag-invite eh, nakinig lang kami. By the way, may picture si, ano, si Pastor Lorena at si Pacquiao magkatabi. Sabi naman isa, oh, eh, kahit nga tayo, nagpapapicture din tayo sa mga artiste. Eh. Wala talaga. Ngayon talaga, lahat ng mali, justified. Bakit? Totoo naman, dumating si Prip Suwat dito, nagpapicture, mga nagpapicture kay Prip Suwat noon, sila dyan nga. <laughs> Ay, si Mon. Yung singer. <laughs> Papicture sila. Wala, ano na eh. Talaga, i-justify na lahat ng mali. Bakit? Because that is the work of the flesh. We tend to justify everything that we do. Listen, while we are to love the sinner, we must always hate the sin. So ladies and gentlemen, as we close today, we can see why God called David a man after God's own heart. Why? Because he did everything that God commanded him according to his will. And you will also see that when the Lord Jesus Christ started his ministry, when he was baptized by John the Baptist, then the voice of the Father from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And ladies and gentlemen, one day, we will stand before Christ at His judgment seat. Will He say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So how about it? What are we going to do? Are we going to follow David as he followed Jesus so that each and every one of us, though we may have something in the past, but if we will focus on the present and move on to the future, serving God, loving His Word, loving prayer, loving to praise God, hating sin, and every false way in our hearts. And if we will do that, then as David was complimented by God, as Jesus was lifted up by God the Father, then we will also hear the ultimate compliment from the Lord Jesus Christ if we will serve God and do the things that were mentioned today as we serve God in this world. Shall we stand up, please? Every head's bowed. We used